Dry ice. The name itself seems like an oxymoron. Ice is made of water, right? And for the most part, there should be a wet mess left behind when it melts. Maybe you saw dry ice for the first time in middle school in a science class. I doubt nowadays, with all the lawsuits, kids would have the glory of hearing that faint sizzle when envisioning themselves as the greatest sorcerer who ever lived! In this episode, we'll be talking about how a product exists that has the potential for such danger has become so ubiquitous as to be used in fire extinguishers, Halloween decorations and haunted graveyard attractions, water bottle bombs at Disney, and even cause a crying sorority girl to go viral. I'm your host, Emily Prokop, and this is the story behind Dry Ice. But first, a quick word from Hashtag Potter and Family, a great group of indie podcasters like me. What is the Potter and Family? Hey, this is Shane. That's not oh, Shane. It's a robot set by the government. And that's Kenny from I'm Now a That I'm... a robot, too. From Now That I'm Older. More like Now That I'm Robots. This is Gabriel Russo from the Hollywood Scandals of Yesteryear podcast. This is Steve from the Drift and Ramble podcast. This is Nick from the Epic Film Guys podcast. This is Emily from The Story Behind. This is Adam from Everyone Has a Podcast. This is Sean Harrigan from the Cinescape podcast. We are you, podcasters coming together in a community to help one another grow. So follow us on Twitter at Potter and Family and use the hashtag Potter and Family in your tweets and retweet other people who do the same. Potter and Family, where great podcasts come home. In 1835, a French chemist by the name of Charles de Laurier was observing liquid carbon dioxide evaporate in a metal canister. After watching and waiting, all very scientific stuff, I assure you, It finally evaporated, leaving behind a solid block of dry ice. What was the Laurier going to do with this? Nothing. No one had any idea for what to actually do with dry ice until more than 60 years later. And what do they say is the mother of invention? Alcohol, of course. Herbert Samuel Elworthy decided to try to use dry ice to create soda water to mix with his whiskey. And it worked. But the process was a bit of a pain in the ice. See what I did there? And again, dry ice just kind of waited around for someone else to figure out what to do with it. Oh, but doctors would use it to remove warts here and there, so dry ice wasn't sitting there doing nothing, at least. Pressed air devices came along in 1925 with an idea for containing and compressing CO2. They created the first CO2 fire extinguisher, but just as a warning, most fire extinguishers nowadays contain a lot more chemicals than just dry ice. Soon after, dry ice was used to insulate railroad cars for transportation of produce, but that didn't last long with the popularity of mechanical refrigeration. In 1926, a store called Schraff's was looking for a way to help customers transport their ice cream from the store to their homes. And while regular ice or ice mixed with salt worked, it would leave a soggy mess, so they turned to dry ice as a solution. By the next year, many ice cream manufacturers followed suit. Here's a fun fact to amuse your friends with if you're standing in a long line at a haunted house attraction. The fog that comes from dry ice is heavier than the smoke that comes from a fog machine. So, if the floor is covered in fog, it's from dry ice. If it's floating around in the air, it's from a fog machine. Many fire extinguishers still use liquid CO2 as its main ingredient, including extinguishers used for industrial kitchen, since it leaves virtually no mess to clean up. But common household extinguishers contain many more chemicals, so as much as you want to play with dry ice, go to a store that sells it. However, if you decide to play with a fire extinguisher, and this podcast does not recommend it, do not use one that, say, is on a college campus and most likely connected to the fire alarms in the building, especially if it's finals week. Just ask Elise Downs, a student at Oklahoma University in 2008 and a member of the Alpha Chi sorority, 
who became viral video famous when her friend videotaped her crying right after setting off the fire alarms in her sorority house. She is most famous for her wailing line of, I just wanted to make it snow. Her father had supposedly used a fire extinguisher to let pellets of CO2 rain down and make it look like it had snowed, and she tried the same thing. But in her defense, if her dad were to get mad at her, she could just use the excuse, I learned it from watching you. When she tried to bring her sisters some holiday cheer, she picked the wrong week to do it, on top of getting a hefty fine and becoming a short-lived internet superstar. Remember in the beginning I talked about Thalorier watching evaporation? Well, a fun refresher of some science terms, dry ice itself doesn't evaporate. It sublimates, which is the process of matter going from a solid state to a gas, skipping the liquid state. Had it gone from a liquid to a gas, it would be evaporating. There won't be a quiz at the end of this podcast, don't worry. I just thought it was interesting. With that in mind, one more warning about dry ice. As it's sublimating, it creates pressure. Disneyland happens to be one of the facilities that makes its own dry ice for whatever Disney uses dry ice for. So, not just once, but twice in 2013, employees filled empty water bottles with the dry ice, closed the cap, and waited. And sure enough, Those bottles exploded, and Disney was none too thrilled with their soon-to-be ex-employees. That was the year Frozen came out, and not to stick up for them too much, but I can't say if I were in their position, I wouldn't at least entertain the idea of making such a loud noise to maybe drown out hearing Let It Go for the hundredth time that hour. Information for this episode was sourced from dryicecorp.com, dryiceinfo.com, howstuffworks.com, knowyourmeme.com, and the Los Angeles Times. For these links and more, visit the show notes at thestorybehindpodcast.com. You can follow on Twitter at storybehindpod or subscribe on your podcatcher of choice so you'll never miss an episode. Thanks for listening.